Oh, what a lovely night to be strolling around with a ghost Pokemon in the lovely Acritique City. How you feeling, buddy? He's feeling pretty good, apparently. That's good to hear, because we got ourselves some business to take care of today. Hey everybody, Dmod Gmod here, and welcome back to some more Pokemon Soul Silver version. In the last episode, we went on a daring hunt for the roaming legendary Pokemon of the Johto region, Entei and Raikou. And after some, uh, minor inconveniences, we'll say, we were finally able to capture them. Seriously, Raikou was being an absolute jerk to us last time, but uh, we'll, we'll no longer talk about that. You know, we gotta move on forward with our life, and just pretend it never happened. <sighs> Anyways... So this time, you're probably wondering, what exactly we gotta do now? Because we have all, we have ourselves all eight gym badges now, so we're done with the gym badges, and we caught the legendary Pokemon. So at this point, there's nothing really left to do but to go on forward and try to find the Pokemon League that we've heard about before, and see if we've got what it takes to become a Pokemon Champion ourselves. But you may be wondering, where exactly is this Pokemon League? And that, my friend, is a very good question, because if we take a look at the map over here, you can see that we don't really have any leads outside of one little hint that we got from Claire to go to back to New Bark Town and to go see if maybe that'll take us to new areas to find the Pokemon League. That's basically the only hint we have to go off of, and that's basically what we're going to be doing. We're going to be going back to New Bark Town for the first time in quite some time and seeing exactly what we can find there, because that's our only hint. However, before we go over there, there is some business I want to take care of very quickly before we go that way, and that is over at Blackthorn City, because I want to be used to move uh, Tutor slash Deleter one more time to teach my Feraligator a brand new move, because we're going to be needing it for the future, and I... Yeah, we should get that out of the way ASAP. Which also means we need to get a Paradox out of here and go fly back to Blackthorn City. Once again. And ironically, even though we, o we were only first in Blackthorn City kind of recently, we've been visiting Blackthorn quite a bit. Move Tutor and uh, Move Deleter, pretty helpful people, you gotta say. That being said though, Paradox is in the party. Let's go on over there for the final time for quite some time. How sad, I love Blackthorn City and it's nice music. But it'll be the last time we go there for quite some time. Alright, Blackthorn City, ahoy, let's go. Right over to the house over here and let's get this started. Because we got some business here. Move Deleter, I choose you. Um, who did I say I was again? Uh, oh yeah, I remember now, I'm the move leader. And yes, we kind of make you forget some moves. Alright. Because I want to get rid of strength on my Feral Gear. And strength is an HM, which is the only way you can get rid of HMs is by coming here. And I don't want strength on my Pokemon anymore. And even though I've praised strength before in the past, strength at this point, we already have a Mammoth Swine with strength, so I don't really need it for like you know, getting around areas, and also, I don't think strength is like, it's not a bad move, I've always pra I prayed, praised it before, but I don't think it's a very useful move anymore, so I think I'm gonna move on from it. It's been a lovely relationship with you, strength, but I'm gonna have to let you go now. I don't know why I'm talking to a move like it's a person, but anyways, uh, I'm weird. <laughs> I love that jingle. And there we go, I have forgotten the move strength completely, because I want to make room for a brand new move that we're going to be needing in the future, and that is another HM actually, right over here, HM07 Waterfall. And since we haven't talked about Waterfall in quite some time, or okay, maybe not quite some time, but a little bit of time, I'll go over it once again. This here is Waterfall, an 80 power, 100% accuracy, accuracy, bleh, 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 accurate, physical water type move, which is a very good thing for our Feraligator. It's very powerful, and Feraligator is a physical attacker primarily, so this is going to be very handy. And it also doesn't mention this for some reason, but Asshole has a chance to flinch the opponent, but for some reason the description here doesn't actually mention it. Maybe that's a typo or an oversight, but whatever. That being said, let's teach it. And there you go. Now you're really going to want to have a Pokemon of Waterfall going on forward because you're going to be needing it to traverse the future areas, so I thought we'd get it out of the way right now and I'd just give you a heads up and let you guys know that you're going to be needing it. And also, there is no Pokemon Center inside New Bark Town, so we're going to have to go over here from Cherigo City and go over to New Bark Town that way because I don't want to keep Paradox in my party, I want to have my full party with me. Because as much as I love this little duckling, uh, it's not part of the team and uh, yeah, it'll get creamed in any fight we run into. It's been a while since we've been to Cherry Grove City too. We're going to all the places this episode. We've been to Ectatique, been to Cherry Grove, been to Blackthorn, and now we're going to be going back to New Bark Town too. Look at how adventurous we are. Alright, need to spark out the PC box. Goodbye. And there we go. That being said though, we're all set to go. To New Bark Town, away! And you know, since it's been a while, let's walk around this route. You know, it's been a while since we've been over here. May as well enjoy the sights. Uh, route 29. It has been quite some time since we heard this song. 
almost feels nostalgic, you know? Because, you know, I had a bunch of stuff happen after this Let's Play like a whole year ago, but hey, you know, we got around to it eventually, you know? Nothing is fun to small details, we're doing it now. There we go, back to Duvar Town we are. Wow, your Poke Gear is impressive. Are you not gonna comment my gym badges or anything? You're gonna comment my Poke Gear? Ah, whatever. Before we go on forward, let's go talk to our mom. It's been a while. Hi, welcome home. You're doing fine, I see. I've kept your room tidy and clean, or is this about your money? <laughs> I think the first thing she assumes is about the money, basically. Uh, just like a real parent. Anyways, uh, we're okay. You, you can keep doing your thing. I'm very grateful for what you do. Just do what you can. Thanks, Mom. Ah. So nice about seeing your mom, you know? It's been a while. That being said, we're back in Newbark Town, and there's only one place we can go, because this way, we already know it doesn't lead us to the Pokemon League, which means we're gonna go by the sea. That's right, everybody. Now that we have Surf, we can actually explore over this way. So let's do it. To the Grand Blue Ocean Away. And before I do anything, I'm going to put on a repel because I don't think I have one equipped right now. Uh, you know, why not? Let's use up this normal repel. This boring normal repel, you know? We don't need... It's so lackluster compared to the super and max repels. But yeah, as you can see over here, we actually have a whole other route over here. Interesting, isn't it? And it's also one of the shortest routes ever because we're already at the end, apparently. And who is this? Hey! Do you know what you just did? You're taking your first step into Kanto. Check your Poke Gear map and see. What are you, the Border Patrol? But yeah, believe it or not, he's not lying. We go over here to the Poke Gear, and as you can see, the map has extended. And over here, we can see the Indigo Plateau and Victory Road lies ahead of us. And this is where the Pokemon League is awaiting us. We got a bit of a hike to go on forward, but we can do it. Let's go. But yeah, welcome to the Kanto region, everybody. Can you believe it? This game actually features two regions, Johto and Kanto. Pretty cool. Unfortunately, this way is blocked off, which means we have to go up this way. And my repel has already worn off. Holy crap, that was fast. Over here is the Tojo Falls, apparently. The link between Kanto and Johto. Let's go. Alrighty, Tojo Falls, here we go. And as you can see, immediately as we walk into here, we have ourselves a waterfall, which is why I said you're going to be needing waterfall to go any further, because if you don't have waterfall on your team, you're kind of stuck. Get a super going on over here, because even though we're in Kanto here, I still want to run into new Pokemon. Alright, let's do this. Nothing over here, uh, nothing to go for, but just to go for it. It's a large waterfall, would you like to use waterfall? And here, in my opinion, is one of the coolest HMs in the game, just visually wise, because it quite literally... ...has you ride up waterfalls. Just like that, how cool is that? <laughs> Pretty cool feature. And right now, waterfalls! Whee! <laughs> yeah. However, I saw an item over here, and even though it's a little bit of a walk, I want to go get this. It's a free Moonstone! Interesting. Okay, cool. That's an evolutionary item stone that will help, uh, help you evolve certain Pokémon. However, uh, honestly? I don't really think there's a whole lot of Pokémon you can run into the Johto region that actually evolved from Moonstone. I think the only one's like Nidorina and Nidorino. That's all I can really think of. How are you feeling behind the waterfall, Gengar? Yeah, this is the sounds of the waterfall. This is one of my favorite things, but again, I think it was really underappreciated. I like how the Pokemon react differently depending on where you are in the Johto region. Like, there's like a lot of unique dialogue depending on where you talk to them. It's pretty cool. That waterfall being just one example of it. That being said, though, cave over with. Let's keep on going. And immediate trainer, I thought you were an NPC or else I would have tried dodging you. Oh well. Be free to see anyone else come here. Are you training on your own? And you know, since you're our first trainer in the Kanto region, let's do this. Let's throw down, baby. Free Pokemon. You got a... Hey, it really is Kanto. You have a Bulbasaur. That's a cute Bulbasaur sprite. I gotta say, I like the Bulbasaur sprite a lot. And I didn't go to the Pokemon Center, so I am completely out of mean looks and halfway out of hypnosis. That's not the greatest, but eh. It'll be fine. You can see the scars of all the Raikou hunting we did last time. Unfortunately, though, even the Bulbasaur is very cute. Uh, yeah, this is the fully evolved Gengar versus the Bulbasaur. And she has an Ivysaur. Okay, she has the whole family line, apparently. Alrighty. That's a mean-looking Ivysaur. He's ready to fight. Unfortunately, though, I kind of doubt he'll take this as well. Let's see. It actually takes it pretty well. Not bad. And it goes for Leech Seed. That's slightly annoying. 
Not the worst thing in the world, but slightly annoying, you know. Stealing my HP like the thief it is. It's okay though, the Shadow Ball will take a nice note. So she had a Bubble Sword and she had an Ivysaur, which means the only one left could be Venusaur, which I'm a little scared of, not gonna lie, Venusaur's kinda scary. As there it is, okay, hmm. We'll probably be fine, but uh, Venusaur's a tanky Pokemon. And look at him, he's a big dino. Actually, he's actually based on a frog last I heard. I don't, I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you think he's based on a dinosaur or a frog? I've heard both. I personally like to believe he's based on a dinosaur, but uh, I don't know. Frog also sounds kind of likely. And this is Petal Dance, which is going to... Actually, never mind, that did nothing. I was going to say, Petal Dance hits pretty hard. And it's still has Leech going on. Okay, this Venusaur is going to be a problem. This guy what I was talking about. Venusaur is a pretty beefy Pokemon, so if you don't knock it out immediately, this thing will live on forever. And you know what? Even though this Petal Dance is going to really, really hurt... Actually, I don't know. Mm. Uh, I'll go for Gonta. You know, it resists the Grass-type move, because Petal Dance, what it's doing right now, is a move where it lasts for a while. Like, once you do it, you have to do it for three turns in a row. But it is a very strong Grass-type move. It's like 120 power and everything. It's actually very strong. But thankfully we resisted, so it's not the worst thing in the world. Gonna go for Aerial Ice here. And hopefully do a good chunk to it. We'll find out. It does a pretty good amount. Good job, Gonta. I always like think that Pokemon are gonna take less damage, but then Gonta's just such a freaking beast that it just destroys everything. And I got confused. Alright. It's one of the downsides of Pedal Dance that if you do it for free turns, well, you have to do it for free turns, but once it ends, basically, you get confused guarantee, which kinda sucks, but. Sometimes it's worth it for that strong power. Gank hits level 35. And we get some nice XP for our show. Oh, you're really strong. Get some money. And a good battle has been fought. Let's keep going. Into this random person's house. Seriously, who, who would put a house over here? Do people even know you exist over here? Do you pay rent? I don't know. Anyways. Where are you off to with Pokemon? The Pokemon League? Are your Pokemon loyal enough for you to win? Let me see. If it, if it doesn't come to trust you some more, it could be tough going. Trust is the time that binds Pokemon and trainers. Something tells me she's judging my lead Pokemon, so let me put Riptide in the front. Actually, here we go. Better idea. Let's put Espeon in the front. Since you know it literally evolved through happiness. Yada yada yada, Pokemon League, loyal enough, and there you go. Ah, your Pokemon trusts you very much. It's nice to see a good trainer. Here, get for your journey. And by doing this, you get yourself TM37, which, if I remember correctly, is TM for Sandstorm. If I remember this, I'm a super nerd. And I'm a super nerd, oh my god. <laughs> I'm surprised I remember that, actually. It's a move that inflicts damage on both you, uh, your, and your foe's Pokemon. However, some Pokemon, such as Rock, Ground, and Seal-type Pokemon, take no damage. There are other ways to avoid taking damage. I'll let you figure it out. And honestly, I would pull the team and talk about it, but honestly, she explained it pretty well. It's a weather, it does damage to all Pokemon that aren't Steel, Rock, and Ground, and if you're a Rock-type Pokemon, it actually gives your special defense a bonus as well, which is kind of nice. Could be useful for some Pokemon teams, but obviously my team has, like, none of those types, so... Actually, it has Mammoth Swine, I guess, but it, yeah, it's not really worth it. But yeah. Interesting move, however, for single player, I don't think I really think it's worth it. Alrighty, onto the ocean we go. And we got some grass over here, and another trainer. Uh, you know what? I'm in the mood to fight, and plus, not to mention, my Pokemon, as I mentioned before, are kind of low-leveled, so honestly, I'll take all the experience I can get. I'll fight at pretty much everybody. Because why not? You know, we're Pokemon trainers. We gotta show who's the greatest, dang it. You look pretty strong. Let me battle you. Alright, let's see. So the girl over there, same trainer class, had all grass types. You have free Pokemon too, which means... Never mind, that is not a Kanto starter. <laughs> I thought maybe he had like a Charmander or a Squirtle, but he has possibly one of the worst Pokemon I could have seen when I had Sparta out in the front. Okay, uh... Let's not do this, let's go into Mammoth Swine. Because even though Magneton is a floating Pokemon with... It's a floating tree magnet, it is not immune to ground type moves. It's actually quite weak to it. It's kind of funny. Goes for Super Sonic, which honestly, I think will be okay. Go for Mud Bomb. Please don't hit yourself, Mammoth Swine, come on. There you go, that's my girl. And it does... Wow, okay. Honestly, I kind of expected it to live that. Metaton's a pretty beefy Pokemon, but apparently not. Good job, Mammoth Swine Jesus. As a Quagsire, one of the greatest Pokemon of all time. And 
for this, I'm gonna go into, uh... Why not Gonzo, you know? He's in a fighting mood today. Look how dopey and happy Quagsire is. The sheer goofiness and just dope dopiness of Quagsire. How can you not love Quagsire just looking at it? A lovable dork. Who also took that brick break pretty well. And is trying to put me to sleep. Which um, is uh, not desirable, but uh, we're just going to brick break through it. And unfortunately, even though Guts would be quite handy with sleep, uh, unfortunately we literally cannot swing while we're asleep. So even though we have Guts, sleep is not good. However, if we, sw if we swap our... Uh, actually, never mind. I was going to say, if we swap our Pokemon out, we should be okay. But apparently it activates before you switch. And a final Pokemon. Execute. Okay. Uh, for you, I have Sparta. Because why not? Cats yeah, like trying to eat anything. I'm sure they can eat an egg. Alright, last Pokemon. I just gotta say, Execute while it's on the screen here. Execute is one of those Pokemon where it is one of the weirdest Pokemon out there. No one really seems to acknowledge it. It is a group of multiple eggs counted as one Pokemon. It is a grass psychic type because, you know, eggs are grass and psychic. And it's just the weirdest thing ever. And yet nobody seems to talk about it. It's, I don't know. Execute's always stood out to me as one of those weird Pokemon. Like, how are eggs psychic? Grass I can maybe see, because, you know, they're kind of organic and, like, you know, part of nature, but psychic type? I don't know where that came from, but whatever. Maybe it's like a metaphor, and, like, if you have a good balanced breakfast, you'll have a good state of mind or something. I don't freaking know. And our mother is calling us, even though we just saw her five seconds ago. Yes, 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 new item, yeah, 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 thank you, mother. Unfortunately, we're not going to be seeing a Pokemon for quite some time, though, so we're not going to get to pick that up for quite some time. Now, that being said, before we go any further, I would like to not be asleep with Gonta. There we go, nice and easy. And we can keep it on going. Onto this bridge over here, which I believe has, yep, another trainer. And you know what? I'm still in the mood, why not? I'm going to battle everybody, because like I said, we really need the levels. Mmm, you're good, aren't you? I have eight gym badges, I have battled everyone, I've caught legendary Pokemon, I am the greatest of all. And he has a Mareep. Which is admittedly adorable, but not what I was expecting. Uh, it's also even more sad that it's higher level than my, most of my entire team. Like, I know you can have favorite Pokemon, but this thing should be an Ampharos by now. But hey, if you have your favorite Pokemon, you want to evolve your Pokemon, that's... I, I understand, you know, that's, that's fine. Everybody's got that one family line of Pokemon where they like the middle form more, or the beginner form more than the final form. I get it. I understand. There we go. On to Route 26. Okay. And I swear there's a hidden item over here. Okay, nope, but there's definitely a hidden item over here. This just bothers me. Why would they put this here if there's no hidden item? There's definitely one over... Really? All right then, they trolled me. <laughs> yeah. If they put that there to troll players, like just conveniently like get them. Good job, you pranked me. Cause you got me. I think we want to go. I swear there has to be an item over here, right? There's no way. There's just no way. There's no item, right? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bother putting repel on. I believe. There is not. Wow. Okay. Sometimes I feel like Game Freak goes out of their way just to, like, to make people, like, super self-conscious about this stuff. I don't know. They're good at this. <laughs> they got me twice in a row. Alrighty, onwards we go. Onto the real hidden item, which is right over here. It's not actually hidden, but shush. And if we get a Destiny Knot, one of the more interesting items of Pokemon. Okay. So the Destiny Knot here actually has multiple purposes to it. I'm only going to be covering the mostly single-player version of it, but believe it or not, in Pokemon Breeding, Destiny Knot is actually one of the most important items in the game. That being said, though, for the more single-player content, uh, it is only there to make it so that if you get hit by a Tract or Cute Charm, which is infatuated as a status, it will reflect back onto your opponent as well. So it's not the most useful item ever, unless you're breeding. In Pokemon Breeding, it has multiple uses. So, uh, yeah. There's plenty of videos on it online and everything, so if you ever want to learn about Pokemon breeding, have no fear. There's plenty of suit sources for it, but I'm not really going to be covering it during this Let's Play. Don't say a thing. Let me guess what you're thinking. Hmm. I got it. You're on a Pokemon League challenge. 
Something tells me he just looked at my badges, like on the like in my bag, or, like on me, and he was he just took a guess. I don't know. Something seems fishy. Speaking of fishes, though, Starmy, who's a starfish, get it? It was a, it was a it was a clever joke. Be quiet. <laughs> Anyways, go for fake go get some damage, and thankfully, with the power of biting this fish, we shall win. I always love Stormy's cry. It's so like powerful. I don't know. It always stood out to me. As they have Giraffery, one of the best Pokemon names of all time. And honestly, uh, my bite is still going to hit this thing really hard, so I'm going to stick with it. Bite him before he bites you with that tail. Yeah, look at that. Nice damage. No flinch as it goes for insurance. All right. That's going to do yeah, nothing, and we're good. And if I can get a new move on this level, that'd be pretty cool. Just saying, better level up. Come on, game. You know you wanna. It's gonna be pretty cool. Just saying. We get nothing. Oh well. And once again, another execute. You know what? Uh, I'll go for Gauntlet this time. You know why not? Let's get you to level 34 too, shall we? Never mind. You know we're close. I thought you were close. And I'm going to Aerial Ice. As it actually manages to live, I'm kind of surprised. And it goes for Stone Spore. I think I'm actually going to keep that. You know, it makes me, you know, double the attack power. You know, that's pretty cool. Oh, this confusion's not so cool. This is going to hurt. Okay, actually, that was not bad. You know what? I'm going to keep this paralysis. You know, double attack power doesn't sound too bad. You know, I, I like being able to one-shot everything with Brick Break. Sounds good to me. You're too much. Not bad. Okay. And I'm going to go for... um. Let's put Riptide in the front. Why not? It's been a little bit. I don't know about you guys, but I always like trying to like mix up the Pokemon who I have in the lead party and... Sometimes it can be a little bit harder than not, because sometimes uh, one Pokemon is just pretty good against a lot of trainers. Speaking of trainers, though, you came from New Bark Town. You must be exhausted. It was actually like a two-second surf across some water. You know, my Pokemon are pretty... They're pretty cool like that. You know, they work pretty fast, but... Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm, and I'm exhausted. And I picked the right time to put Riptide in the front. Holy crap. This might be a fire type whole trainer. Which means it's time to use our new move, Waterfall! Which is a pretty cool effect. Although I got intimidates when I actually live this. It did not. Okay, fair enough. Gonna get level 34 for our troubles. Everybody hitting level 34 today. Not bad. No new move, but that's okay. As it has a star you. Okay. Uh, you're not second like set yet until you evolve, so. Anyway, I'll keep her tied on the front. You know what? Why not? Fight water with water. Level 36, holy crap. I am so underleveled. <laughs> oh god, it has minimized. Oh no. So you know all the double teams we've seen before where they just kept dodging moves? Yeah, well, minimize is that but on steroids. It gives you two uh, stat evasion boosts in evasion. So it can get very, very stupid very, very fast. As you can see, okay, uh, Prowl Getter, I'm going to need you to hit this. As it goes for Camouflage, one of the more rare moves you'll pretty much never see unless it's on Staryu. And it turns into a ground type. That was the worst heavy you could have chosen against a water type, but whatever. I'm pretty—I I honestly don't even know, honestly, but I'm pretty sure camouflage works off what the Pokemon is like battling on, like the terrain you're battling on. So if you're battling on the water, it like turns into a water type. If you're battling on the grass, it turns into a grass type, stuff like that. And I think we're battling on a bridge if I remember correctly. So I guess that counts as ground type. But yeah, interesting move. Not a move you see every day, that's for sure. Thankfully, though, it worked out. And we didn't get dodged by Minimize too many times, so that worked out perfectly. And our final Pokemon is Nidorina. Pretty cool. And I think you're a ground type at this point. I don't actually remember. I don't... Because its final form is Poison Ground type. Okay, this one's still just Poison. As we get the flinch, I'm going to go for Surf now, which I think we're not going to because we got Intimidated earlier, which is why our Waterfall didn't do as much. As it does, perfect. And Luna loves XP! Isn't it so nice to actually get XP now we don't, we don't have to use experience share? Isn't it so lovely? Not too shabby, you're doing something right if you can beat me. Even by an unlikely fluke. 
I like you. Give me your number. You can be my practice partner. Ah, why not? Do, 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 do. It's been a while since we gave my phone number to somebody, but there you go. Look at too high and mighty about beating me. It was a fluke. Alrighty, I'll keep that in mind. It wasn't a fluke. Uh, anyways, though, uh... <laughs> on to Route 26. We're making good progress. And it's a fisherman, which means Frog Gator is probably not going to be the best choice here. So instead, I'm going to go for... Let's go for Espeon. Why not? Even though Espeon is the highest level Pokemon, but yeah, whatever. I like our good kitty. Oh, I'm feeling great today. I feel like I can beat the Legend League Champion. Okay, I know he's I know he's saying this, and I'm proud of you for you know having a good ego, but uh, but don't have like free Magic Carps. Okay, he actually has some Pokemon besides Magic Carp. Okay, maybe he can't beat the League Champion. However, I picked a perfect time to have uh, Espeon out because this is actually a Poison type. Which, on that note, one thing I will always say, I never really got why Psychic would beat Poison. You think it'd be the other way around, because, you know, if you're sick from Poison, you're not, like, feeling good. You think Poison would beat Psychic in that regard, right? Because, you know, it affects your nerves and everything, but I guess not. Pokemon logic, dang it, I don't know. One of those type matchups I never really understood. And that side beam is doing so much. Keep in mind, side beam is not actually that great of a move. Like it's a, it's an alright move. It has okay power. It's not the best psychic move by any stretch, but it's still hitting really hard. Not just the power of Espeon. Feels so freaking nice to finally have a real psychic type attack. Now Espeon is now actually a part of the party. Look at her go. And another cool fish. Okay, I think uh, we're just gonna wrap this up real quick. Another side beam, and uh, we'll call it a day. Nice and easy. Although I should definitely be giving more XP to other Pokemon because, uh, yeah, Espeon's actually one of the few Pokemon who are not on the level. Compared to the rest of my team. And we don't even get the level up. Okay, fine, fair enough. No, not in this battle. Alrighty, good job, Espeon. Let's keep going. And I'm gonna switch it up here. Uh. I'll go back to Sparta, why not? Alrighty. And another trainer who looks like a psychic, which is perfect for Persian because we're going to bite the heck out of him. I was gonna run away, but you know what? It's a rat versus a cat. We know how this goes. It's a classic matchup. Go get him, kitty. And oh my god, that Pico did so much damage. <laughs> yeah. Good old technician plus freaking, uh, what do you call it? Silk Scarf. What a nice combo. Like the rat, and there it goes. Just like real life. Although, honestly, now that I think about it, I think Raticate's actually bigger than Persian, so I wonder if that's actually how it worked out in Pokemon. I don't know. Well, wow, look at all those badges. I'm impressed. We're not satisfied just collecting them, right? You understand me. I need more power. I want more than badges. I want blood. As he has his own Espeon. Respectable. I like Espeon. I am one myself, after all. However, I would switch it out, but I'm a very much afraid of this thing will absolutely obliterate me, so I'm just going to go for fake out and go for a bike, because I'm pretty sure I'm faster. As I am. Perfect. And just like that, the Alpha Cat has come out on top. I hope, I hope my SMO didn't hear that, though, because I like both of them. Good battle. What a good sport. I like this guy. What a good sport. Okay, your phone number? I cannot, apparently, but we are getting a call from another phone number. Rena. Good evening, Zachary. It's me, Rena. Were you awake? Ever failed to catch a wild Pokemon? You need to ask? I would never fail to catch a wild Quagsire. Uh, 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 never mind. Alrighty. And clearly, she's also a fan of Quagsire. You know, a cultured individual, just like myself. Uh, ooh, no duo. I like this Pokemon quite a bit. The flightless bird. However, unfortunately for you, my friend, you're still a bird nonetheless, even if you don't have wings. Which means the cat is out for blood. By shooting rocks at you from its forehead. It's a magical cat, what can I say? I should be probably putting a repel on, but honestly, I don't really mind that much. Wild Pokemon are not that big of a deal. And just like that. Who could this be? Another house. Let's check it out. Not too often you see houses out in the middle of the route, right? 
Did you think you were lucky to find a place to rest while you were needed when you needed it? Don't be reserved. I look forward to people's smiles. Let your Pokemon rest here. So yeah, believe it or not, this person here is actually quite handy. She will be essentially your Pokemon Center for the next little bit, because there are no Pokemon Centers from here all the way to the Pokemon League. So this is your, your next best stop. And I'm very thankful for you. Thank you for the help. Well, with that being said, of a Pokemon Center here, I think this is a perfect stopping point for the time being, because we, as you can see on the map here, still have a little bit of ways to go. So that being said, we'll pick off... That we'll pick up next time right over here and keep on going on our forward journey to the Pokemon League. So that being said, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And next time on Pokemon Soul Silver, like I just said, we're gonna be keep on going our hike towards the Pokemon League. See you guys then.